Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2017 Policy Dialogue Day. I'm Stefan Lindberg, uh, Professor of Political Science and Director of the Wiedem Institute, and it's my pleasure to invite the Vice Chancellor, uh, Pam Friedman, up to say um, welcome. So, hello everybody. Uh, I welcome you to Gothenburg and to this uh, event. Uh, I must say that I'm so proud that we are hosting this in Gothenburg. I'm also proud that we actually are hosting three of the organizers uh, for this event, and then we have Uppsala here too. Uh, the theme which you are going to, to have on the agenda, I think, is very, very important right now. And also, how to get to action is one thing that is very important. As you probably know, and I think it's all around the world, we are uh, asked to cooperate between academia, practitioners, and policymakers. And this uh, meeting here is really a good ex uh, example of meeting and cooperation between the different actors. I will also say that I'm the uh, president of an organization, uh, International Association of Universities. And uh, at the time being, I have never seen so many uh, conflicts and so many problems appearing uh, around for the higher education institutions around the world. And what you are discussing here today is maybe one of the most important things we have to do, to see to that people get knowledge, uh, giving individuals the possibility and knowledge to participate in a democratic uh, development of the world. And for that, I foresee that we have to work together because it's if just the higher education institutions work for, for these areas, I'm not sure that we can win. If actors in society also participate in that, I think that we can really start a new movement of more knowledge within this area. And with those few words, I would like to have you uh, that you have a very successful meeting, and that this is a step forward for the awareness of these issues that you will discuss during these days. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And it's my honor uh, to invite as the second welcome address, Madam State Secretary for Foreign Affairs, Annika Söder. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you. First, I'd like to welcome uh, uh, participants from other countries to, to Sweden. And I've, even if I'm a Stockholmer, I've also been asked to, in, to welcome you to Göteborg, uh, <laughs> which I do with uh, pleasure. Um, I will not lecture experts, uh, but I, I believe as a practitioner and a policymaker that it is, as the Vice Chancellor said, of key importance that we work together, uh, in particular since we're living through very difficult times when it comes to the topics of, of this uh, policy dialogue uh, day. Uh, and current insights on democracy governance and armed conflict are more needed than ever, and I will come back to that. I'm also proud that we have uh, three specialized Swedish academic institutions represented here today, and I'm really proud of all of them. The Varieties of Democracies Institute, uh, the Quality of Governance Institute at Göteborg University, as well as the Uppsala Conflict Data Program. Um, as a practitioner, I see on a daily basis how uh, the challenges related to democracy and also to armed uh, to uh, resolving conflict in a peaceful manner are growing. Uh, and they will have to be, I would say, uh, a key part of our foreign policy. Uh, we all know that democracy always have, has to be reconquered and understood. And that is why I believe that the varieties of democracy is a key tool for us to understand and support democratic developments. A long time ago, I commissioned a study uh, that was titled, uh, Why do not democracies deliver services to the poor? 
Um, we didn't find uh, a very clear answer to that. Um, and I think today's question is, uh, in addition to that question, why do um, people use ele democratic elections to elect authoritarian leaders? Uh, and this, of course, shows the complexity of societies and how we need to look at uh, the various um, societal uh, features in order to understand how to move ahead. I think we've all seen uh, the paradigm shift in the world uh, coming for several years. I think that many of us did not expect uh, this shift to become as cumbersome and difficult and that we would see uh, backsliding in so many respects. And this is, of course, something that for a policymaker is um, extremely difficult and sometimes I, I even lay awake at night to, uh, to try to, to understand what can a small country like Sweden do, what can those that support um, peaceful resolution of conflict and democracy and good governance, what can we do? And the question is, of course, is this a trend that can, uh, will continue? Uh, or is, this, is it just a temporary law? And if it's just a temporary law, what can we do uh, to uh, break uh, the trend and move in the other direction? And the many questions are, of course, the role of democracy in interstate wars, the role of democracy in civil conflict, the role of democracy in low intensive armed conflict that we see in, in many countries and in many cities around uh, the world. Uh, democracy and rights, uh, freedom of expression is also today used in order to uh, spread non-democratic values and we have a media landscape that is threatening democracy Constitutes, constitutes opportunities, but it also threatens some of the values that we have had tools to deal with before. When it comes to the prevention of armed uh, conflict, uh, Sweden has always been a, a, a little naive, so we proposed a program on prevention of armed conflict already in 2001 when we first when we had our first presidency of the of the European Union and this is a program existing in uh, the European Union but we have not been able neither in the European Union nor when it comes to its vicinity or further uh, away uh, to implement that program now Sweden is a member of the United Nations Security Council and we continue to be a little naive. And we work very closely with Antonio Guterres, who is now uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations, to impose the notion of prevention of armed conflict. And in this context, when we analyze uh, causes of armed conflict, uh, the aspects that I mentioned earlier, um, the economy of prevention, and the primacy of politics, which are buzzwords that we, that we use. Uh, we need also to use the knowledge to be able to put at the center of this decision makers in the Security Council responsi responsible for international peace and security, what leads to armed conflict, and also impose on members of the Council that they need to uh, have a strategy in order to deal with the conflicts before they become armed. That's the economy of prevention, and that's the primacy of politics. Um, so um, I see uh, many aspects of this as rather gloomy, uh, but at the same time I also see very positive developments and I would like to mention Africa, where countries take responsibility within the African Union uh, to see to it that democratic elections, for example, actually are upheld and that those elected can also uh, gain their uh, seats. On a daily basis, I work with one African country uh, that has had uh, a multi-party democracy for 15 years, but where opposition and uh, government cannot agree on the basic features of democracy. Uh, uh, elections, electoral commissions, participation, equality, many of the features that that varieties of democracy are studying. Um, 
And I feel that this work to try to get them agree for the best of their country is also a preventative uh, work. Since I have your attention, I will say a few things more. We, uh, we are not only naive, we are also, I would say, fundamentalists when it comes to democracy, rule of law, and, and human rights. We feel more and more alone in this work in the European Union and globally, with the exception that I mentioned of, of Africa. But anyway, uh, we've just issued a communication to our parliament uh, about human rights, democracy, and the principles of rule of law in order for that to guide our work. We've also issued very recently 135 country reports on human rights, covering everything from Norway to North uh, Korea. Uh, we also have a policy framework in our development cooperation where this plays a key role. And I'd like to add, in addition to naivety and trying to be at the forefront, that we're also trying to work with this in a respectful manner in order to increase the understanding that you sit on and to bring it to bring it forward. I think there is a feature now that is important to remember because we're all used to work with development cooperation as a main tool uh, to uh, um, sell our views on democracy and human rights. Now when democracy is backsliding in countries that do not need development money, we also have to rethink how we work when it comes to um, supporting democratic development and, and selling this concept, because the leverage coming from ODA, from development money, may not be there uh, anymore. Um, let me also say a few words about international idea also represented here today. Uh, it's another Swedish-based intergovernmental organization that we are very proud of. It has a broad membership from uh, all continents around uh, the globe, and I'm so happy that uh, IDEA will very soon publish a signature publication on the global state of democracy, and you will hear more about this uh, later. And uh, I think it's exact exactly what we need now to analyze what works and what doesn't work. And I'm really happy that IDEA and VDEM join together in this project that will deepen our understanding and become useful, I'm sure. Uh, finally, let me also so, uh, highlight the work of the World Bank's World Development Report. Uh, this year about governance and law, and I'm really happy that we will hear more about this today as well. And I guess it's not a coincidence that next year's World Bank Development, World Development Report will actually be about prevention. So the armed conflict nexus uh, with uh, democracy in all its respects uh, will be highlighted by the bank, and I think that is of key uh, importance importance. Um, so I hope that this will be a useful day for everyone and I, I'm sure that for me and my colleagues from, uh, from agencies and from the ministries in uh, Sweden, we will benefit a lot from the discussions. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. <laughs>